Hello, and welcome to the Moncast, where we compare Pokemon and Digimon. I'm Stevie, and today, as always, I'm joined by Quinn. Howdy! The current score is 23-22 to Digimon. This time we're discussing the 46th episodes, Typecasting and Jewel of the War Greymon. We recommend watching the episodes before you listen any further, but you do you. And of course, a massive thank you to our fantastic patrons for supporting the show. If you want to join them, you'll get early access to the uncut versions of every episode. So let's start off with typecasting. This was a good episode for filler. It was very good filler. I'll admit from the title I had no idea this would be a pseudo wudo episode. Yeah, could not have told you that. But uh, today we learn pseudo wudo can't melt steel beams. <laughs> I don't get it. The scientist woman whose entire thing is just, well, you can't just believe things because scientists studied it. I need to prove all the scientific facts for myself. She just, she sounds like a climate change denier. And it's really annoying that, like, the show kind of rewards that. But I liked her. But, yeah, you, she, she wasn't a bad person. She just is not a good scientist. Okay, I think I actually just, I didn't like her specifically. Maybe I just liked the dynamic between them. And loved the back and forth between the researchers. It was very funny. And Brock just really trying to simp his way in there. Just be like, whatever you discover, I'll believe it. <laughs> yeah, let me know what type you decide Sudowoodo is and I'll agree with you. He literally said that. Yep, don't change for your relationship. I, I did appreciate right at the beginning with, with Team Rocket, which is like, I think we should go down the river. And so do the cops. It was such a dumb joke, but I really enjoyed it. I still don't think I quite understand that joke. So to go down the river means to, like, you know, be put in prison. Oh. It's not a really good joke, except that Meowth was pretty witty there. Yeah, Meowth's just like, the cops want to arrest us, ha. Huh? But the whole intro's only good because they then burn down their own balloon, just so that they can't get over the river in it. It's very funny. It's pretty good, especially since you know the balloon's going to be fine next week. Yeah, it'll be there just next episode. Just because... But that means they carried the basket across with them. Um, I, I also appreciated, well, all the all the bridges got took out on the river by a tsunami, which, A, I have questions about that, but also, I, I really liked the, yep, but we got a right to work, we'll have this finished in the next six months. I mean, it's, it's probably a realistic timescale, right? It is, it is. I really liked how, like, how well they put that joke. I think it was a typhoon, wasn't it? Something like that, but I still feel like that would not destroy all the bridges on a river. But it did. But it did. And then there's just, there's one guy in a boat in the river, and he's only willing to let them cross if they bring him a pseudo widow. And that's the framing for the, the filler, and by filler standards, it's actually decent framing. It gives a decent reason for why they have to wander off the beaten path this time. Instead of just, they get distracted by thing and do thing. They, they teased us with it being a capture episode, and then we did not get one. How did they tease the capture? Well, because the guy said, go capture me a pseudo Udo, and then they did not do that. Ah, uh, yeah. Team Rocket just used a rope. Yep. I really thought Brock would get the pseudo Udo, though, at the end, because I know in future series he does get one. I wasn't sure if it was now. Yeah, that would have been cool. I think it might be in Diamond and Pearl, then, that he grabs himself a pseudo Udo. And by the way, pseudo Udo is such a good Pokemon. I really like pseudo Udo's just, like, victory cry thing when he's happy. I love it. pseudo Udo's great. I mean... His name just means, like, fake tree, basically. It's just like, it's kind of like was. It's a fake tree. And then he's a rock cat because he's petrified wood. It's great. That is interesting. I like that. And, like, this whole episode did really well to just sort of sell him as a Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. He had a lot of personality for a Pokemon who will never come back. Until Brock gets one. Well, but that'll be a different Pokemon. True. But he's great. I love him. I, I love the just holding branches to look like a tree. Yeah, it's great. And they actually did a good exchange with Psyduck as well. Yes, and Misty just being so condescending. That's just a tree. We're not looking for trees. Until the tree moves. There's a lot of, like, just little funny things in this. Just like, oh, he used Vine Whip. Nope, he just picked up a vine. I mean, it's just interesting because you can use Mimic. And they use that to just be like, cool, Sudowoodo has, like, a dozen different attacks it can do now. So I like that they ran along with that, even though it isn't how it works in the games. 
copies the target's last move and has 5 PP. I would be very surprised if it went between matches. Yeah, it looks like yeah you retain the copied attack until it faints or is switched out, or the battle ends. Cool. But still, I really like the idea of doing, like, Pokemon team doubles with a pseudo-Wudo and some, like, a, I don't know, Gyarados. So you could just have your pseudo-Wudo using Hyper Beam or Hydro Pump or whatever else. I was into that. Really powerful moves. That is cool. It's just an awesome gimmick. And I'm slightly disappointed we didn't get to see Wobbuffet's gimmick again, just because it was defeated by Polly... Well, even though that probably isn't how that should work. The counter should have just countered the water gun. Probably. Because if it was countering flamethrower already, it should have just been prepared for water gun. So, Wobbuffet was cheated. Yeah. And there isn't really that much else to say. I just kind of really like Pseudo Widow a lot. And um, Brock was decent, and Tream Rocket are the best. Just when Rocket, Team Rocket, are trees. So the Tream Rocket. Did you get it? Yep. Very good. Thank you. I love that even after the... Like, I know I say this joke every every week, but I love that even with the balloon gone, they just had these tree costumes. Yeah. Team Rocket are great. They're so good. And Ash and Co. were okay as well. And the filler characters were decent. It was all around just a, a pretty good episode. But was it filler? It was extremely filler. Very filler. And there's nothing captured. No gym badges. No real progress. But we saw a pseudo Wudo, so it was nice. And Brock did more than usual, which is always good as well. Yep. He simped so hard. I don't care enough to Google that. This is probably stupid. But do you know what else is stupid? Black War Greymon. Nice segue. <laughs> so yeah, let's move on to Jewel of the War Greymons. Jewel of the War Greymon. There's no S. Here we go! Should be War Greymons. Or Greysmon. <laughs> Wars Greymon. I want to put the S in more places. Wars Greysmons. Was Grey's Mons. Jewels of the Z- Was Grey's Mons. That was awful. It really was. That felt so wrong. <laughs> so yeah, Oikawa works with Ken's dad. So Ken's dad is now officially the lesser parent. That's how it works, right? We already knew that Ken's mum was the best. Yeah, yeah. So this just confirms it. Ken's dad was also there. And it's just like, yes, I'm the dad. I too am the concern when Ken wanders off. That was about it. And we also find out that Oikawa believes in aliens, so that's interesting. I forgot about that, yeah. Definitely evil. He believes in aliens. He's crazy. I mean, he does have proof that there are aliens from another universe. He hangs out with two of them that he created. Ah, they're not aliens, then. They are foreign objects, apparently. I don't know that I agree with that. Wait, I just realized that Blackwood Greymon sounds so very racist. Yeah? Where he's just like, you're foreign, you need to be destroyed. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. He's really xenophobic, especially considering he is from another universe. Yeah, but Black Crow Greymon's like, I don't know where I belong, because I was made by real people, but I'm a Digimon, so what do? And that's kind of just been this whole thing the whole time. It's just like, I don't know where I came from and what I'm for, so I'm going to fight things. I guess it's one approach. Made sense. But before all this Black Cock Greymon stuff, we get another look at all the stuff with the Dark Sparkets. And I hate all of this. It just, it weirds me out, and it's so wrong. Why do the Zero Two kids start stalking the children and being like, this is what the good guys do? I mean, I sort of get, because they're definitely going to get re-kidnapped and have been turned evil. But at the same time, like, maybe this is the time to talk to their parents. To be fair, they did try that, and some parents just slammed the door in the faces. But still, just following kids around is weird. I think the fact that they got TK's mum to get all of the names and dresses just makes it even worse, because that's such an invasion of privacy. And I do have to admit, I was wrong when I said that TK's mum would have no more lines in the series, because she had some. She did, she did. Briefly. Not many. Briefly. But she's not completely out of the picture, then. Maybe she is now. I don't think she'll have much more. If anything, maybe in the like final episodes or something. I th- I think she might be in uh, right before the epilogue. But hey, TK's mom is not as bad as the Dark Spark. His parents are just like, wow, he's smart now. We could use this to gain media attention. Well, I'm like, we can get media attention because our kid did his homework. Hell yeah! He got kidnapped and is smart. This is a great. New story. God, it's such a good thing a child got kidnapped. They are so bad. They are the worst. When did he even get his winter break homework? I mean, probably the other day. 
winter break would have started, I guess, a bit before Christmas. Just like he gets kidnapped, comes home, and does his homework. You were just unkidnapped last night. You decided to do all your homework. This is incredible. This is not concerning at all. They are just such vain parents. I hate them. But then the kids aren't that good either, because they go around kicking cats. Which is around the same level as Ken kicking a puppy earlier. Just so you know that they're evil now. Only evil people kick cute things. Yeah, that, that that was just so completely unnecessary. And such a dumb callback to when they had Ken kick a puppy. I still can't believe Ken kicked a puppy and that they forgave him for it. It was sort of mind control at the time, but still. Yeah, but they were like, it's okay because you didn't think the Digimon were real. But he definitely thought the puppy was real when he kicked it. Well, they didn't see the puppy get kicked. They weren't there for that. We did. As the viewer, can't believe he kicked a puppy. And that he's still the best character in this whole series. <laughs> God damn it. So yeah, I'm not a fan of stalking children. Funnily enough, it wears me out. Especially when the good guys are the, the ones doing it. I hope this plan ends soon and that they get a better one. That doesn't involve illegal stalking of children. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then there's just a brief interlude where we get Agumon saying, I spoke to God, and he gave me lots of exposition to pass on, as well as the power to warp Digivolt again for reasons. Yep. I love that they could just go talk to the God of the digital world now. Knowing what happens next week, their whole thing about how you can just go have a life really rings hollow. As- Pikachu! Or Grandma, you don't have to fight and die for something. It's a matter of believing in things. Anyway, I'm gonna go die now. He doesn't go to die. He just leaves. Like he did last time, but we don't know where he went last time. That's true, but, you know, we also know what's gonna happen next week. Yes, we do, but I only have vague memories. I think the first time I watched Zero 2, I just sort of went through it and then forgot everything. So I don't know most of the specifics. But yeah, I have a vague idea of what happens to Black Quad Greymon, and it's not great. But yeah, this is kind of like, I guess, a, a sort of conclusion to his character arc. Which is just, he finally decides, I'm not going to fight things anymore. Because the, there's more to life. Like, eating and having friends. Maybe. Yep. He's still not sold on it. That's fair. I don't know, but, but what if fight? I mean, he even admits though, that fighting's not been working for him. You know, what if fight? Now we need to go sacrifice ourselves for something that turns out to be completely pointless next week. But, yeah, I'm not that mad at Black Quad Greymon, just because I find him more goofy than frustrating. I think O2 would be better if he had either not happened at all or had died already. But yeah, I mean, it's fine. I think he's an overall net positive for the series. Just because it's fun to laugh at Shadow the Hedgehog in Digimon. That's fair. I just, I don't think he's really contributed anything to the plot since the flower. Oh, the flower. Oh, I love the flower. I do love the flower. Which is a real flower. Yes. Uh, I'm glad that was brought up. That's made me happy. Do you know what else makes me happy, though? What's that? I really like it when Wormon just berates Black or Greymon. Yeah! It's just like, oh, my life has no meaning. Poor, poor, bit of me. How dare you be such a He's so brutal. I love him. But he's more of an accent. See, he talks like this. And I told you not to make me do this voice again. Sounds so creepy. And slightly Italian. Wormon sounds pretty creepy. I like him. But his voice is objectively kind of weird. It is weird, but it's a good weird. It's a nice weird. Not like the way you do it, where it's slightly creepy and slightly Italian. I don't know why it's slightly Italian, but I'll take your word for it. That's what my brain hears. It goes, that's Italian. And I don't know why. (laughs) That's such a weird voice, though. Please don't do that again. Fair enough. Don't make me. Don't make me. I didn't. You chose to do that. It was your fault, obviously, because I just said so. Come on, how are you not getting this? No, no. Oh, and Agumon is hungry, by the way. That comes up. It does, it does. I too am hungry. Do you reckon the writers of Tri just went back and watched this episode and went, Oh cool, so all Agumon does is fight and talk about being hungry. Yeah, I wish they'd gone back and watched the episode where he, uh, Agumon and, and Black Four Greymon just like talk for ten minutes. That would have been cool. That would be good. I think they'll be friends on Facebook, though. Or basically just not real friends. They'll just pretend that they're friends. That's what Facebook is, right? Pretty much, yeah. I assume I haven't been on in ten years. Good for you. Anyway, um, is there anything else in this episode that we want to mention that was particularly good or interesting or bad or whatever? No, I think I'm good. It was fine. It was an okay episode. It wasn't filler, so this, there's that. But it wasn't anything special, and I don't think it was entertain- as entertaining as... Pseudo Wooda, Pseudo Wooda. I mean, I did enjoy the, like, the multiple fight scenes going on at the same time. 
That was good. You don't usually get that sort of thing from Pokemon, at least. That's true. I will give them that, that they've been doing a lot of splitting the party lately, and it's been good. Yeah, it's because it's they've had multiple just random villains spawning up out of nowhere to fight. Or they've had multiple objectives at the same time, like sorting out the kids and Daemon and Oikawa and Black or Greymon and everything. It's all just kicking off and none of it really means much, but it's all happening at the same time at least. So it's, it keeps it just engaging. Pretty much. But yeah, I I quite enjoyed this one, just because I really like Black or Greymon. Fair, fair. But I did also enjoy Pseudo Ludo's episode. They were good episodes this week. I love when that happens. Yeah, they were actually both good episodes. I enjoyed them both and wasn't like, oh, there's this thing, I hated them. Should we go on to Mono in Mano then and actually compare the two? <laughs> now it's time for Mono in Mano, where we attempt to compare these episodes by arguing with each other over trivial things. So first of all, let's go over our Monsters of the Week. Who was yours? Gotta get it to Pseudo Ludo. I'm very tempted to agree. Black Boy Greymon was good, but it's not like he hasn't had other episodes. Oh, I wasn't going to go with Black Boy Greymon. Oh, really? I wasn't going to go with him. I was going to go with Wormmon, just because he was so absolutely savage. <laughs> he really was. And it's the first one to actually kind of get through to him, really. So yeah, Wormmon was good. Pseudo Ludo is a close second for me, just because he's a great Pokemon. That's fair. I'm willing to give it to uh, to Wormmon there. I mean, it's not a competitive thing, this one. You can still have Pseudo Ludo as your favorite. Pseudo Ludo! Yay, I love Pseudo Ludo. He's just a wibbly tree. We need to just replace the entire Ash team with just Pseudo Ludo and Team Rocket trying to catch him. Brock Pseudo Ludo carries around rocks, and Misty Pseudo Ludo carries around just like buckets of water. Just be like, yes, we are a rock trainer, a water trainer. Yeah, yeah. And then Ash's Pseudo Ludo would carry around starter Pokemon and nothing else. That would be great. Pseudo Ludo is a good. I think next time we play a Pokemon game with Pseudo Ludo available, I will be capturing one and trying to use it on my team. It's because it's fun. Which protagonist was worse? Daisuke again was barely there, and Ash did pretty okay this week, so I'm going to go to Daisuke. Yeah, I suppose that's one way of doing it, is just Davis wasn't there much. And that's usually a good thing, but this week Ash was good. Yeah, like Ash didn't really do anything stupid at all. So yeah, that makes a nice, refreshing change. And... Yeah, Gray Davis. While he kind of just made some leadership decisions, didn't really do much. Uh, he's very much just another one of the team. So, yeah, let's put Davis as worse well this week. Best human character. That's it for me. The one I went with is kind of just a tie between the researchers. Okay. Just because I found them to be really entertaining filler characters, and I liked the way they bounced off of each other a lot. And I think they're actually just a good driving force of the episode, just giving them a goal and an interesting idea of being like, hey, how do you go about researching Pokemon? So yeah, I don't usually give it to filler characters, but I like them a lot this week, and I thought they were a good thing. Yeah, I'm going to give mine to scientist guy who was right about everything. Scientist guy, but not scientist woman. I don't remember either of their names, and I'm not sorry about that. Oh, it was Pierre and Marie. Pierre and Marie. Pierre, also the name of she sized bird. Fun fact. No human stood out in Digimon for us then. It was just the filler characters in Pokemon, which is really weird. That never happens. I think that means it was good filler. But which episode had the better storyline? I guess I'm going to go with Digimon on this one. Pseudo Wudu was very entertaining, but it wasn't really a story. It was very much just a wild Pseudo Wudo chase. And they did the whole Pseudo Wudo hates water thing so many times. We just kept trying to torture Pseudo Wudo. <laughs> it was so mean. May I have asked Pseudo Wudo what type he is? He's the type who wants to eat lunch. That is my type as well. It's like all the time. I just want to eat. They have good jokes in Pokemon. And they have moderate to okay jokes in Digimon. So which episode are we giving the point to? I think I'm going to go with Digimon. I enjoyed moving the plot forward even if it involves stalking children. Oh, I did not like that. Oh, you brought that up again and now I'm like, which one do I actually prefer? Because I feel like the whole first half of Digimon was unsettling. But how often do you get Digimon fights that involve breaking the open the back of a car so you could shoot your gun at people while Arukenimon drives? It's so rare to have a Pokemon filler episode focused on a Pokemon. That's good. Where it's not just arbitrary and boring. But Digimon car chase. I think we had that like just a couple episodes ago though. I guess that's true. I think we've had Pokemon filler Many, many times. This is the first one with Pseudo Wudo. And Pseudo Wudo was so good. He's a dancing tree. He is a dancing tree. And I, I definitely think he was the best character. I just don't know that I think it was the better episode. Ooh. Ah, I could go either way on it. 
I feel like Digimon had more cons to it than Pokemon did. Ah, this is tough. I'm struggling. Should, should I just give you deciding vote? Because I'm torn and cannot pick between the two. Uh, usually you don't end up actually considering my opinion that much, so, you know. Well, see, my opinion's just like, I like them both. They were both really good. So I'm happy to just go with what you decide if you preferred one to the other. Okay, then I'm going to give it to Digimon. You're giving it to Digimon. Okay, so let me type that in. I'm having, I'm having to brace for that last episode being worth, like, negative five points. <laughs> it would be the first episode to ever lose the points at the end. But that does make the score 24-22 to Digimon, which is currently on a four-episode winning streak, which is strange because the episodes haven't been that great, but Pokemon, I guess, hasn't really done much. They've done some entertaining filler, but, like, Pokemon has way too much filler, and I kind of want to penalize that. I think that is the disadvantage, is even when Pokemon is fun, it's still filler and doesn't really advance anything. Exactly. Digimon can just do an average episode that still actually advances the plot and characters a bit towards an end goal. Plus, now I have to put up with this ridiculous theme song at the beginning, which is nowhere near as good as the last one. It is nowhere near as good. It makes me sad that I have to replace the Pokemon Johto sound effect with the new worst one. Instead of Pokemon Johto, Pokemon Johto. <laughs> it's silly. I don't like it. It's not very good, no. It's bad that Pokemon had a gym badge episode and that's still lost to Digimon. But it just wasn't a very good gym badge episode. No. The gym battle episode before it won, but where he actually got the badge was bad. Yeah. Personally, I like it when Ash loses. I like it when it encourages new strategies. Exactly, exactly. It kind of did that, but you did just rely on the environment to win. Yeah, which, like, okay, but now you could not go back to the gym and do that again. Yeah, so then it just felt sort of like he was gifted the badge. A similar thing to when he defeated Onyx using the fire, fire sprinklers. Where it's just kind of like, cool, neat. He didn't really deserve that, because it wasn't based on his skill. You cheated. Pretty much. It's like, go farm a Butterfree to use Confusion. It's not that hard. I've never really thought about it, though, but Pokemon's battles are uh, just way more dynamic than Digimon's when it comes to strategy. That's very true. I, I am a little more hopeful that maybe the new season won't be like that, but uh, in general, yes, they just shoot their biggest light beam at each other. The battles are way better in Pokemon. But Digimon had the car chase as well this week, <laughs> kind of gone at the same time. Also, for some reason, apparently now Warbrainman can just fly, because we went up and battled above clouds. I thought he could always do that. Uh, he always could jump pretty high, but I didn't think he was able to fly. I'm pretty certain I remember him flying against, like, Metal Seedramon when he was fighting them. But, eh, I think they could always fly. Fair enough, fair enough. Because the, the back shield also doubles his wings. God, I wish that were not true, but okay. I mean, it's split down the middle to look like wings, so that's how he can fly. You're not wrong, I just wish that were not true. I think we're getting distracted. Should we wrap this up? Probably. So next time we'll be discussing the 47th episodes, Fossil Fuels for Pokemon, and Black War Greymon's Destiny. So do you think Ash is going to stop and talk about how bad fracking is? Or? It's going to be a Greenpeace episode. That'd be kind of bad. We'll see. Oh, I reckon it'll be something to do with Johto's fossil Pokemon. I mean, it will, but... I can't remember what they'll be, though. Or what they are. Having Ash tell kids why they should stand up and fight against pipelines would be good. Uh, if you want to talk about today's episodes, you can reach us on Twitter, via email, and in the Moncast Discord. And you can support the show by Patreon to gain access to the Moncast Uncut. Of course, a big thank you to Quinn for joining me as well. Where can the people find you? You could find me on the Twitters, at RealYubico, where currently we're doing lots of talking about Digimon Adventure Colon. Yes, you can find us both over on Lost Organization on covering Digimon Adventure 2020, or Colon, or Digivice Symbol, or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, all the links will be in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, bye-bye! Bye! Why'd you always do that now? Because you say bye more times. That's true. Alright, stop being recording. I've got to have the final word. It's my podcast. Oh, okay. Bye. And stop recording.